in behind the back line of Rutgers. A gorgeous day, mostly sunny skies, temperatures 60 degrees. It is rather breezy as this one gets set to kick off. Rutgers in the pink. This is their breast cancer awareness game. And the Scarlet Knights on a sizzling run coming in. They are undefeated at home this season, and they're trying to win for what would be the 12th time in 14 games this season, and also take an aim at what would be their second consecutive Big Ten title. They are one of a host of teams that have lost no more than one game within the conference so far this season. It is very top-heavy in the Big Ten. A lot of quality teams at this point, just over the midpoint of the year. And Lori, when you size up this matchup, what's something you look for in the early going as a potential yardstick for how this game may unfold? Well, really for Rutgers, it's going to be about being patient in the attack. Indiana, not the results that they've wanted as of late, but they've been organized defensively. So can Rutgers break them down by moving the ball quickly, but be patient when they do have possession. Look to see if they can move it side to side. And then for the Hoosiers, it's really going to be about looking to see if they can find those moments in transition. Once they are defensively sound, can they find Blitchock up top quickly once they do win it in the expansive shape of Rutgers? Both teams well rested. Neither has played since a week ago today. Rutgers won 3-0 at Purdue, while Indiana lost 2-0 at home to Nebraska. But the Hoosiers will have to be fully engaged in the early going here because this is a quick strike Rutgers team. Rutgers last week in defeating Purdue in West Lafayette scored all three of their goals in the first half and they outshot the Boilermakers 20 to 3 in the first 45 as well. Right now it's Indiana off to a promising start working in the final third. This is a team though that doesn't enjoy a lot of possession in their opponent's half and sometimes it's hard for them to find that rhythm, connect passes because they spend so much time during the course of a game defending that when they start to go forward it's hard for them to settle down and find the confidence on the ball that's necessary. Rutgers without a loss at home this season. Indiana without a win on the road. So the numbers certainly don't favor the Hoosiers, but in a conference game like this, sometimes you can play more relaxed if you're a team like Indiana. You're on the road, nothing to lose. Why not just go for it? And so far, they're applying pressure towards that back line of Rutgers in the early going. Well, that's just the key, Steve, as well. Just to come in here, play relaxed, know what they can do. Started off this season really well. Didn't score as many goals as they want, but we're keeping clean sheets. Now it's really about utilizing those moments, how they can get numbers into the attack. See if they can be dangerous and, and pick off one early against Rutgers away from home. Rutgers going direct here. And that'll be out for a goal kick. Rutgers coming off an historic season a year ago. Led by head coach Mike O'Neill, who is now in his ninth season as the manager. In his 23rd year with the program, he's the reigning Big Ten coach of the year, and he's a, a Jersey guy through and through. A New Jersey native, grew up in this state, went to Seton Hall, and in fact, grew up just about 30 miles north of where we are here in Piscataway today. So knows the Jersey club scene very well. It helps in recruiting, and that's the way he's been able to build what has become a juggernaut here in Piscataway. Last year, their first ever undefeated run through the conference, first time as conference champions in the Big Ten with a 10-0 mark and advancing to the College Cup as they made it all the way to the Final Four in women's college soccer. And Lori, you just browse this Rutgers roster. They're pretty much loaded at every position. They have kept a lot of players in state and it's been a treasure trove of talent that they've been able to rely upon just in the state of New Jersey. And last year, getting to the College Cup, there's just a real understanding of a winning culture 
for the Rutgers, and it is something that Mike O'Neill talked to us about yesterday coming into this game, just getting better every day, having that standard to find ways to improve, and, and really a lot of it has, done, has been through their defensive efforts, making sure that they work collectively, and then they're able to get numbers into the attack in dangerous areas. One of the reasons why we see a number of players on this Rutgers team contributing to their, to their goals. 20 different players on the roster from the state of New Jersey, two from nearby New York. A lot of the women on this team played together coming up through the club system, so they have that familiarity as they arrive here on the Rutgers campus, and that helps as well. There's Riley Tiernan intercepting a pass for Rutgers, but then Indiana winning possession back and the free kick for the Hoosiers. Yeah, it's a good example of, their, of the Hoosiers of doing a good job of keeping possession, but there are times when they can take more risks. Once they play it in to their two center mids, can they get on the half turn, play forward quicker? Erwin Van Benekum is in his fourth season as the head coach in Bloomington was the associate head coach and assistant at Duke prior to his move to Indiana. He also spent one season as an assistant at Alabama, the native of the Netherlands, coming over to the U.S. and now trying to build this Indiana program up. It's certainly a tough conference to gain ground in. They're currently near the bottom of the standings, looking for their first Big Ten win. And he basically didn't mince words when we talked to him earlier this week. He says that we've struggled with our confidence. We haven't found a rhythm. We need more offense, but I do like some of the things we've been doing in the last few games, some of the, the stylistic types of things we've been able to accomplish. And I would agree. I mean, as we mentioned, they are well organized defensively already in the first opening minutes of this game. We see them drop back into a 5-4-1, difficult in a lot of ways to break down even though they are conceding quite a few goals as of late. But a lot of that has to do just with what they're trying to build out of and then getting caught in possession deep in their own defensive half. But organized defensively and then trying to keep keep possession as much as possible. Here they're playing a bit more direct and then it's Blitchock in the end. Excuse me, it's Kim in the end. That's called on the foul trying to get on the end of that long ball. But good idea and that's where they need to find the space in behind. Runners like Kim or even Bennett on the far side trying to find space in behind, be threatening to this Rutgers defense. Well, they have not started conservatively. That's been one of the concerns of Erwin Van Benekum. Sometimes they play too safe. They pass it backwards or to the side, but they've been going forward, playing direct. They get the throw in here into the 18 before it's headed out. And now Rutgers trying to use their pace to counter. Here's Allison Lowry, tied for the team lead in goals this season with seven. She's got size, physicality, she's got the speed, and she draws the set piece here. And what could be our first yellow card of the game. Well, it's a great individual run from Lowry just to take three players on. But these are the areas where Indiana gets themselves in trouble. We're seeing a card given to Rush, it looks like, for Indiana. And there's no need to make a foul here. You've done so well to get numbers back behind the ball. Lowry does well to spin, try to take on players. But then here's the effort from the Hoosiers to get behind, just slow Lowry down. You see her get her head up to look for her teammates. And then there's the foul in the end, just unnecessarily. Kylie Daigle standing over this one from a dangerous position. Free kick hits the wall, pops up. And the clock stopped once again. So just shy of 10 minutes gone by here at Yersac Field on the campus of Rutgers University. The 10th ranked Scarlet Knights and the Hoosiers of Indiana. No score on this Sunday afternoon. Second game of a doubleheader here. The men's teams for both of these schools played just prior to this women's game. That one ended in a 2-2 draw. So a full diet of college soccer here at Rutgers this afternoon. Lori for Indiana. 
an interesting start to the season. They began the year with eight straight games without conceding a single goal. They tied the program record, as a matter of fact, 720 minutes without giving up a goal. But since then, they've lost four in a row as they come in here this afternoon, and they've been outscored 11 to nothing during that stretch. Yeah, and I, I think more so when you're hearing those stats, it's what they've done on the attacking side. They've not really been threatening or dangerous against the opposition. So no one is, very, is scared to play them in terms of squeezing the game, sending numbers forward because there hasn't been enough in the attack for the, in the Hoosiers. And then it's put themselves under pressure defensively when they're trying to build out deep in their own half. That has to be a, not a concern, but a priority coming into this game and throughout this 90 minutes, just to make sure that they're playing forward, alleviating any sort of pressure when necessary, not putting themselves under pressure. And here is Lowry once again up against Elena Kalin, 1v1. So good at holding up the ball, waiting for teammates to offer support. Brings in those other assets and resources into the offensive third. That time, though, a miscommunication and a throw in for the Hoosiers. That's Riley Tiernan, a sophomore from nearby Voorhees, New Jersey, the Big Ten freshman of the year a season ago. Leading the team in assists and shots. All region first team a year ago as well. One of the very talented young players on this Rutgers roster. They returned nine starters from last year's team that won the Big Ten title, but they also have 10 newcomers this season as well. So replenishing and adding to their experience with depth. Indiana trying to get forward. And a team that sometimes has trouble with that double pivot, connecting passes through the middle. And the flag is going to be up for offsides here. First offsides of the game as Indiana held the line to draw Rutgers off. Yeah, and Lowry's been instrumental so far in the attack for Rutgers. Individual effort moments ago to take on, but this time just be being an outlet, dropping a bit deeper, good hold up play here. She is trying to feather the ball through. A clear offside, well done from the Hoosiers just to hold their line defensively. Exactly though, what Rutgers is gonna need to look for, just those balls in behind, especially if the Hoosiers are gonna step up, play a bit higher defensively. And again, playing direct for Lowry, using her speed down the flank, has two defenders in her face, cuts it back for Tiernan, gets it on her left foot, and the line drive shot is saved rather easily by Jamie Gerstenberg, the sophomore goalkeeper from Germany. Gerstenberg, the Big Ten all-freshman team player last season, tied the program record for shutouts a year ago with nine and was third in the NCAA, a player who's been on several of the German youth national teams and making an immediate impact in Bloomington a year ago. Here's Lowry again, this time foul as she tried to hold it up. Now Lowry, almost a quarter of an hour in. Man, Rutgers starting to grow into this game offensively, getting these overlapping runs like we saw right there from Daigle and probing more in the final third. But overall, what has struck out the most to you in about the first 15 minutes? Well, I like the way the Hoosiers are playing. It's been a bit more direct. They're trying to find Blitchock higher up, who's, who's doing a good job of holding up the ball, and it's allowing for players like Kim and Bennett to get in more advanced positions. Now can they do that more consistently through this game? And I think for Rutgers and, and the way that their season has gone and some of the individual players they have, just connecting, being a bit more patient in the attack, see if they can move it side to side will will be key for them as they continue on throughout this first 45, especially. The Scarlet Knights unbeaten in their last three. They started the season winning their first nine. First time in program history they accomplished that feat. Their only loss has come to number 17 Penn State on the road in Happy Valley. And 
That is the team that they are picked to share the Big Ten regular season title with. Preseason, they picked Rutgers and Penn State to split the conference championship, and so far the Nittany Lions is the only blemish on the Rutgers record. They do have one tie, and that is to number eight Northwestern. And right now it's Northwestern at the top of the Big Ten standings. The only team without a loss in conference at this stage of the season. Here's a chance for Sam Kroger. Tied for the team leading goals with Lowry with seven. Tried to slide it through. Indiana winning possession in the middle of the park. Fifteen minutes gone by. Both teams with a select few chances. Still taking the measure of one another right here. Indiana trying to play out the back. And Rutgers will pick their moments to press Indiana here today, the way they do all of their opponents. It's not a full-on press, but they're very selective about their moments. And now they'll recalibrate from the back. There is Allison Lynch. A very prolific Rutgers offense so far this season with 34 goals on the year. Averaging 17 shots per game. They're generating a lot of offense. They're finding the back of the net. Their shot attempts twice as many as their opponents are getting off this year. So it's not just offense, but also a robust defense that has lifted them to this 11-1-1 record. They've held every opponent this year to six shots or less in every game. Yeah, it just speaks to the team collectively doing the work defensively, making it difficult for the opposition, but then it also puts them in really good positions to attack with numbers. We talk a lot about Lowry and Kroger up top for Rutgers, seven goals apiece on the season, but you have to look at Daigle, Brocious in the midfield, each have four and three goals on the season as well. So a lot of production in and around the box from a lot of different players on this Rutgers team that made him so dangerous in these early stages of the season. And a lot of times, Laura, you don't have that balanced production. Either a team might be very good at generating offense or they may rely on their defense to keep them competitive. But Rutgers seems to have found that sweet spot, that balance between being very good defensively and also creating a lot of offense as well. Well, I think also you typically see teams that have maybe one or two players with a lot of production. And then if opposition can shut th those two players down, then they can have success against them. But that's the thing with Rutgers is they have so many players that are willing to take risks, get into the attack. It really starts with the, the team fight to get behind the ball, make it predictable for themselves, and then win it in dangerous areas. So what do you do if you're a defense like Indiana when you have to deal with someone like Lowry, like Kroger, all of their individual offensive talent? How do you contain and defend both those players? Well, a lot of the times it's difficult to contain, so you have to cut out the passing angles, deny the service into them so they can, can't get on the ball. But it, then it comes down to positioning you know, for this Indiana Hoosiers team playing in a three back, but it'll look like five at times and just deny the space on the outside, but drop as quickly as possible as well and keep everything in front of them to make it predictable. Something that we haven't seen so far. There's a ball, right idea from Rutgers, a diagonal ball over the top. Just needs to have better weight on it. See if they can find the Hoosiers running at their own goal defensively. It was Riley Tiernan 
a sophomore who just couldn't get onto the end of it for Rutgers, a player who's on the Herman Trophy watch list for this season, a high school All-American in Voorhees, New Jersey, and the younger sister of Madison, a former Rutgers player who's now an assistant coach with the program. So Big Sis is also kind of her boss. And this is the issue right now for the Hoosiers. Just so many touches in the midfield, and then when they do look to play forward, there's no one to play to, and it's just easy for the Rutgers to regain possession, pick off the pass, and then and try to attack themselves. The initial ball, whether it's Blitchock or even Kim or Bennett up top in that three front for the Hoosiers, somebody has to be an outlet to connect that first pass to get more players involved in the attack, and then they can get players looking to see if they can spring in behind the Rutgers defense. Rutgers maintaining good width here, something that head coach Mike O'Neill said was a priority. Working both sides, now trying to play through the middle here. And that's one of the balls that can go out wide to the far side, over the top, where there's more space more room for error when you're looking to play in behind. So for a team like Indiana, if you don't have that focal point for the outlet or somebody that you trust to get the ball to, to hold up play, what is the path forward? What's the formula for turning defense into offense? Yeah, connect your pass. As soon as you win it, can you connect a forward pass? Somebody just check off, hold the ball and allow for more numbers to join into the attack but it does come from recognizing that early, knowing that there's a player and then taking the, taking the opportunity. If it's too slow, Rutgers is a good enough team defensively to be able to deny that pass. Now some daylight here. Kylie Daigle pulls it back for Kroger. A lot of red shirts behind the ball. Nice little give and go for Lynch, who cuts it back. And Lowry couldn't get there. Now Blitchock splits defenders with a pass. Anna Bennett with space, but too easily dispossessed in the middle of the field. Yeah, and it's Bennett, as you can see, she's the lone player up top, and then there's five players back for Rutgers, who's waiting to pick that ball off, because there's no outlet for Bennett to be able to play to. Anna Bennett with only one goal this season. She led the team in points as a freshman two years ago, now a junior from Holland, Michigan, and one of the players that they just need more offense out of at this point in the season. There are no players with more than two goals on the entire Indiana roster. This team collectively has only eight goals total. And those eight goals came in just two games. There are only two wins so far this season over Trine and Indiana State. They have been held scoreless 10 different times this season. Now the game for the Hoosiers, number nine, Jordan Levy. Number 25, Paige Weber. And number 27. First substitutions of the game here. And coming just about midway through the first frame here at Rutgers. The Scarlet Knights and the Hoosiers, no score. Indiana in the early going. They're showing some good spark on offense, but more recently in the last 15 minutes or so, it has been the Scarlet Knights taking over with possession and creating more offensive opportunities in the final third, but neither team all that dangerous as of yet. The Hoosiers content to sit back, absorb the pressure, but still playing that high line defensively. Trying not to let Rutgers get in behind. 
Here's Brocious moving into the 18 now for Kroger. This time going for Tiernan, back post, and Jamie Gerstenberg not of her net to snare it. Well, kick off your week five NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific with the Countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. They'll go all access with two of the NFL's top defenders, the Cowboys' Micah Parsons and the Rams' Aaron Donald. Plus, Randy Moss ranks the best catches from yesterday's college football action. And they'll also have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews of each game right up to kickoff. And well done from Gersenberg. Just to come off her line, read that play, because that's the right idea from Rutgers to play that diagonal ball. Gives them a little bit of time to be able to get in behind. Forces in the end to be facing their own goal defensively. And then Rutgers can get runners into the box. But Gersenberg, wise to it, comes off her line early, makes the play. Here is Lynch. And then the errant pass. And for as good as Rutgers has been, there has to be a bit more patience, more rotation of the ball, find the wide areas, then look to see if the central spaces can open up once they do get the width. Right now, a bit too rushed, especially with how deep Indiana and condensed they are staying defensively. To stay calm, look for the little combination plays to look to see if they can break them down. Gia Gearman coming in for Allison Lowry. Gearman, the sophomore from Hamilton, New Jersey. Has a pair of goals this season. One of the many high school All-Americans on this Rutgers roster. As we drop south of 20 minutes left to go here in this first half of play. This the ninth all-time meeting between these two schools. Rutgers leads the series with six wins only one loss and one draw and they have never lost to indiana here in piscataway in fact the only hoosiers win came two years ago in bloomington when they beat rutgers in overtime and it's been a very one-sided series in a lot of ways as the scarlet knights have outscored the hoosiers 10 to 3 over the course of their first eight meetings Trying to break the lines with the pass. Now the Hoosiers willing to take on the risk of playing in that high line, but with the pace of Rutgers up top, it's always a tricky balancing act because that sometimes leaves you vulnerable to forwards getting in behind. Yeah, and when teams set up like this, then you have to move the ball quickly. And we talked about finding that wide area. That's a good ball. Looks like it is going to run out of bounds. Just a bit too heavy on their final pass right now, Rutgers. But otherwise, just keep moving the ball quickly. Look for those combinations. Once it does go wide, create overloads the for the Hoosiers, number 14, Olivia near the end line or near the sideline, excuse me, to be able to break down that condensed block defensively from Indiana. A couple of substitutions for the Hoosiers here as both coaches making subs in the last 10 minutes. Getting some fresh legs out on the pitch here as both teams search for the game's first goal. Jamie Gerstenberg in goal has played 10 of the game so far this season for Indiana. Allowed five goals. 
has one of the two wins for this Hoosier squad. Meanwhile, on the other end, Megan McClellan, the grad student from nearby Kearney, New Jersey, is in goal for Rutgers, but has barely touched the ball today. She is the NCAA's active career leader in shutouts with 41. But not a busy first half for her to this point. Now Indiana on the ball in search of some protracted possession here. And Laura, this is really the key for them. When they get the ball, what can they do with it? Can they have possession with a purpose? Right, and there was an opportunity to go in the transitional moment to keep carrying, wait till something opens up, and then they go all the way back to Gerstenberg and then have to build out from there again. Yeah, and then you lose the moment. You allow Rutgers to get numbers behind the ball, and you have to attack it in a different way. Well, exactly, and that's what we talked about with Rutgers and how good they've been, the commitment to get behind the ball, try to slow things down. So really for the Hoosiers, doing a good job of finding an open man initially, but then not taking the risk. The fine line, though, between the risk and, and forcing it once you've been on defense the majority of the first half, but just being an outlet, being a player that wants to get into a bit more of an advanced position so you can get the ball to your feet and then allow for others to join in with you. And two substitutions for Rutgers, Adriana Curla and Gianna Romano both coming in. Curla, the grad student from here in New Jersey, a terrific story, a rare seventh year player in college soccer, missed most of last year with injuries. In fact, she's dealt with injuries for several years, multiple concussions, stress fractures in both of her legs. A grad transfer from Columbia University, started playing college soccer, when Obama was in the White House. That's how long it's been, and here she is back for a seventh year to finish things off on a high. A rare set piece in the Rutgers end for the Hoosiers. As we come up on 13 and a half minutes left to go in a scoreless first half from here in Piscataway, New Jersey. Set to serve it into the box, floated in, and a whistle as contact was made here. And we're gonna do this again. Indiana hasn't displayed a lot of aerial acumen on set pieces this season. Hoping they can find some magic here. This time, it's kept on the ground. Kalen got it, played it back. Now chipped in, top of the 18. And easily dealt with by the Scarlet Knights. Better passage of play from Indiana here in the last few minutes. And that is better, Steve. Just finding an open player. That time it was Olivia Smith that's come on, finding a little bit of pocket of space, and then looking to see if she can play that final ball through. The right idea from the Hoosiers, just need to continue to con connect their passes. Don't force anything. Once they do get into those advanced positions, keep the ball moving. Well, it's always hard, is it? You know, we spend so much time defending. You use a lot of energy, then you get the ball, and the mind has to switch around right away. And it's so difficult to start thinking offense after you spend so much time defending. It's not as easy as you might think. Well, certainly, but they do a, a good enough job in their own defensive half to keep possession. So it's just about working the ball up, finding those areas in the attacking half as well, and just keeping pa staying patient, making sure that they find the open player. Olivia Smith did well to 
to find herself in a good area. That's another big aspect, isn't it? Patience, just to be able to be calm on the ball, have that sense of composure and poise, and not feel like you have to make a play just to make a play. Yeah, and that goes for Rutgers right now, too, because we've talked about how good 34 goals on the season have been really dangerous once they've gotten an attack. And I mean, credit to, to Indiana coming here and, you know, sitting back, making it compact, making it predictable for them. and forcing Rutgers to, to play some passes that they normally wouldn't. Haven't really been able to get on the end of it or created clear chances themselves, Rutgers in the attack. Now, something Mike O'Neill, head coach of Rutgers, told us earlier this week, I think is also very important, is he's got several players that he believes can take the temperature of the game, get a feel for the timing, when to speed it up, when to slow it down, and sometimes that's an underrated asset. Another set piece from distance. Loft it in. Well, and to your point, Steve, that's an important aspect, especially with a variety of teams that you're going to face, whether it's in the Big Ten, the regular season, even postseason play, having the ability to go direct if needed, find players like Lowry or Kroger in behind, or, or just move the ball side to side, and that's what they're going to need, especially from a player like Fluchel in the midfield. Continue to keep the ball moving side to side, circulate it around. But make sure that you just stay confident in your play. Don't rush things, because it really just takes their one opportunity. Can't get impatient or frustrated with the play, especially not creating a ton of chances in this game so far if you're Rutgers. And listen, that was a good glimpse, Steve. Good glimpse of, of what Indiana can do once they start moving. It forward ball comes back, play it out wide. Just have to find that a bit more consistently. And this is Elena Kalen with the ball here. And the free kick on the near side, the senior from Pittsburgh, whose sister plays basketball in town at Duquesne. Very athletic family. Now just inside of nine minutes now left to go in this first half. At this point, Lori, which coach is going to be more satisfied with the way the first 45 have unfolded? Well, I think Indiana is going to be happy with the way they're defending, getting numbers behind the ball. And, you know, the first couple of minutes we saw them be a bit more direct, look to see if they could find some space in behind. And then it really turned into Rutgers having the majority of the possession, just couldn't find the final pass that's going to give them a good look on goal. But now we're starting to see Indiana feel a bit more confident in their play, starting from their defense, finding open players now, and they can get this pass off, find some wide channels. Ariana Rose with the one touch, flicked on. Now a chance to flood forward with numbers here. And Rutgers will concede a throw deep in their own end. That's good work from Jordan Levy, the sophomore from Long Island. Among their leading goal scorers this season with a pair of tallies. Number 23, Kelly Gutkowski, and for Indiana. And substitutions for both teams now here as we work our way. Just south of the eight minute mark left to go here in the first half. And this will be Rose taking the throw. A freshman from Ontario, part of the Canadian Youth National Team pool, headed on, comes out, chipped back inside the box. Appeal for a handball, none awarded. As Kalen plays it down. Indiana trying to finish the half pretty much the way they started. Taking the initiative in the offensive end. It was that middle stretch where Rutgers dominated possession. Didn't create a lot of quality, genuine goal scoring opportunities, but held the ball for long stretches. Indiana has been better here in the last few minutes and now down to the half dozen final minutes of this first frame.
And there's an opportunity, though, for Rutgers. We're starting to see consistently they have three players back, but there's no attackers that are threatening them for Indiana. So push more players forward, get more players around the ball, create the overloads that we've been talking about, Steve, whether it's in the wide areas, force the Hoosiers to have to defend out wide, and then that opens up those central areas. Too many players back for Rutgers, conserv too conservative defensively, especially when there hasn't really been any threat in behind for the Hoosiers. A lot of this game has been played in the middle third. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that we've seen. We knew, sorry to cut you off, but it's something that we've seen with, with Rutgers. They want to keep possession, but so does this Indiana team. So it's not totally surprising. And I think uh, the thing that has surprised us the most in this game is that Rutgers hasn't been more dangerous quickly in behind, looking to threaten also see if they can get on the outside of those three center backs for Indiana. And why do you think Rutgers has not been more threatening? What's been missing? Well, it's exactly what I said. You can see right now in the build-up play, they have four to five players back. And Indiana has their entire team behind the, the halfway line. So take more risk, get more players. You just leave two players back. It's only Blitchock or the subs that have come on. Blitchock in the early part of the first half. That was the one that was staying a bit higher. And that also allows Rutgers to be able to deny the pass in behind. So you want more players around the ball, whether it's defensively or in the attack. Riley Tiernan taking an inventory here from the near sideline. Tries to play it over the top for Post, but never had a chance to get there. Allie Post, the freshman from Mountainside, New Jersey, just coming off the bench. Very decorated high school athlete in the state of New Jersey, played basketball, ran track and field. And now down to the final four minutes here of the first half. From your sack field in Piscataway, New Jersey. Big Ten women's soccer. Number 10 Rutgers hosting Indiana. Rutgers trying to improve to 12-1-1 one, and one on the season. Indiana searching for just their third win overall this season and what would be their first Big Ten win and first win away from Bloomington. Trying to jumpstart their season a little past the midpoint here as we get into the middle of October. Long throw in. Heavy touch there. And then Haley Gatowski, the grad student from New Jersey, taken down in the free kick for Rutgers. And it's a clear foul on, on Ham, just going to ground, trying to make the play, gets the entire player. Camille Ham, the sophomore from Carlsbad, California. And Gatowski, the player that was fouled for Rutgers, just coming off the bench. The grad student who played four years at Temple before making the move to finish off her career here in Piscataway. Now Post cutting in from the left. Tiernan trying to turn. Holds it up, brings others into the play. The shot from distance, and in the end, a one-hopper to Gerstenberg in goal. Well, it was a great play. It's Post that's getting into the end line. Exactly what you want if you're Rutgers. It's the first time we've really seen that cutback ball. And then I felt like Tiernan could have played this first time once it came to her. Just lays the ball off, does well to hold off her players. Right there where I feel like she could have laid it off. It's a bit too slow, and it allows Indiana to get back in place defensively and then a bit of a lackluster shot in the end that's never going to test Gerstenberg. But right idea initially to go in line and look for that slotted ball back. That will be on for Rutgers going forward, especially as Indiana has those three center backs retreating, trying to get behind the ball, stay with their players. It's going to be the late runners that could be dangerous inside the box. 
That's one of those plays that makes you wonder, why haven't we seen more of that from them here today? And it's those diagonal balls initially, just clip those balls over the top, allow for your front runners to get on the end of them. And that's one of the reasons why you want to commit more players if you're Rutgers going forward, because then you can create the little combination, the 1v2s in those wide channels that allowed you to get in line and serve balls into the box. Closing in on the final minute of the first half. Working down the left flank once again. Gearman this time. Craftily navigating through defenders and then the long shot from distance again, handled by Gerstenberg. Yeah, Sarah Brocious, the junior from Voorhees, let it fly. But again, shots from distance, nothing that has really tested Gerstenberg in goal for Indiana. And now just half a minute left to go before the break. But I like that idea for Brocious to just try to unleash a shot because that's also going to draw out the defense for the Hoosiers. They're going to have to step up to test that shot. And then you can look for that final pass, a little slotted pass from a runner in behind. So it's two good opportunities, good looks for Rutgers late in this first half. And I'm certain that's something that Mike O'Neill will talk about going into halftime. A bit more variety in their play in the attack. And that will take us to halftime here at Gersack Field in Piscataway, New Jersey. Big Ten women's soccer. So can Lowry, Mason, or any of the others finally get Rutgers on the board here as the second half is about to commence. This is a team that so far this season has scored 34 goals, but held to just three shots on goal in that first half against Indiana. And the Hoosiers without a shot on goal. Much less a surprise than what we saw from Rutgers. This is an Indiana team with only eight total goals this season, and all of those came in two games. They're only two victories so far this year. Again, Indiana looking for their first Big Ten win. And Rutgers trying to remain perfect here at home this season at your sack field in Piscataway, New Jersey. Steve Schlanger, Lori Lindsay, thrilled to have you with us on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Just past the midpoint of the college soccer season, a few weeks left to go, some critical conference games, and then of course the postseason in college soccer always comes up quickly. And at this point, Lori, when you look at this Rutgers team in particular, Top 10 in the nation, only one loss so far, a lot of talents on this roster. How far do you think they can go this year when you look down the road? Well, ex extremely far. I mean, if you look at their goal production alone coming from several players and then two of their, their top players, Lowry and Kroger up top, seven goals apiece. And here's Tiernan trying to cut it back and it's gonna be a goal kick but they have the ability to defend, defend in numbers. I think that's really what's aided in their attack. And then they're committed to get numbers in and around the box. And they have a good variety, not only of, of the ways that they can attack, but the players that they have, players that can take on 1v1. A player like Lowry can hold up play really well. So they have a lot of the pieces that make it not surprising why they have been so successful. It's just about taking one game at a time, something that Mike O'Neill talked to us about and knowing how important these last five games are to get results and, and continue to progress throughout the season. Last year, Rutgers set many different program records for statistics like wins, goals. They also ended the season with their highest ever program ranking nationally, which was number three in the country. Made it to the College Cup for the second time in program history. Claimed their very first outright Big Ten title, going 10-0 in conference play. And picked as the co-favorite along with Penn State to win the conference again this season. Right now one of six teams with no more than one loss in the Big Ten. Northwestern is leading the way at the top of the conference there without a loss so far. And in fact, their only tie coming to this Rutgers team a few weeks ago. And another good idea though, Brocia is picking up some good space, especially as Banks carried that ball forward to find her. Just has to pull that ball a little bit wider to Tiernan. 
to be able to make the play and then be able to get numbers into the box from the delivery. Headed by Blachok. Now trying once again to work out wide, but Camille Ham, the sophomore from Southern California, couldn't catch up with it. Ninth all-time meeting between these two schools and yet another ranked opponent on the Indiana calendar for this year. One of seven ranked teams Indiana is playing this season. That's the most they have ever faced in a single season. And this is a good test though for Rutgers especially in their, in their attack, because we talked about in the first half, Steve, with the Hoosiers being really well organized defensively, a lot of the times in a 5-4-1 formation, and just cutting off the angles to be able to find Lowry up top or even Kroger. And it looks like Rutgers, a lot of the time, are just trying to, to force a ball over the top and behind, and Indiana doing a good job of just dropping early, collecting the ball. It's a good test for them to be, the Rutgers, for Rutgers to be patient and again, continue to cycle the ball around, move it side to side. We haven't seen that enough of them finding Flushell in the midfield, letting her dictate the tempo, get her team organized when they are in possession. Sometimes a game like this just comes down to one moment of quality from a single player. You can forget about the team statistics, the collective numbers. Sometimes it's one of those games where you just need an individual to make a play at the right time. Here is Tiernan in space, going 1v1 against Camille Ham. She's got pace, but her shot, once again, not all that dangerous. Gerstenberg had the near post covered. And Tiernan's doing a good job of, of staying wide getting herself into a good position to buy herself a little bit of time. Here's the ball that's sent out. And then you can see the loads of space she has to be able to run at the back line, in particular Ham, but just opts to unleash the shot early. It's a tough angle because Gerstenberg has it covered the entire way. Why not just keep going in line, look to see if you can play that slotted ball back to the runners coming in late into the box for Rutgers. And when I say this is a good test, forcing Rutgers to come up with different ideas in the way that they want to attack, whether it's with numbers, getting in into the wide channels, but also getting in line, having the delayed runners. And once again, Tiernan getting on to the end of this one. Clever cutback, races to the end line, and can't lift it over Gerstenberg. Could have been much more threatening. But Gerstenberg has that height that is such an asset and good quick reflexes at the near post as well. Well, and it shows the, the ability of Tiernan to be able to take on 1v1, just a little cutback move to buy herself some more time. And then she does go in line, had the runner on the far post. And credit to Gerstenberg, who's had a good game so far for the Hoosiers in goal, making her presence known, just snags the, that one. But better idea, and those opportunities will continue to come for Tiernan as she, she stays wide puts herself in good positions in the attack. One of the few times that a Rutgers player has actually gone all the way to the end line before cutting it back. A lot of times in that first half, it felt like they were just settling for long shots from distance. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, we said it a couple times already in the second half, but that's what's gonna make this Rutgers team better because right now there's not much in the attack at all for the Hoosiers just willing to, to play this game defensively see if they can play for the tile most or that one moment in transition. So the onus is on Rutgers to, to create their own opportunities and not force the, force the chances, just be patient, continue to move it quickly. Tiernan has all kinds of daylight over here on the left. She was calling for it, finally receives the ball, but the flag is up for offsides. Yeah, and that's, she'll be bummed about that one, just sees the entire line, the entire way, knows she has to do better. Now, speaking of Tiernan, I mentioned earlier how her older sister Madison is a former player from Rutgers and a, a current assistant coach on the team. And it's kind of funny because their family 
when Madison first started playing soccer, they didn't know anything about the sport. Her dad basically just put her on any team just to let her get some experience, go out and play. They didn't know about the club system and how to really work your way up the ladder. They kind of figured it out as they went and realized how good Madison was. And they then knew that when Riley's turn came, they were much more schooled in the process of how to get her onto the right clubs and channel her up here to Rutgers eventually. You know, get to talk a lot about Kroger and Lowry up top with their seven goals apiece on the season. And, and for Tiernan, only one goal, but six assists. And so does so much of the work off the ball and then plays the provider to those two a lot of the times and really come to life in this the second 45 so far in these first two minutes, the second half. Doing a good job of positioning and to see her tracking back, doing the work defensively as well. That's one of the things that head coach Mike O'Neill really loves about this Rutgers team. Their commitment to collective team defense. They have a lot of offensive stars, but they're willing to grind, to get back. They don't coast. They will hustle back and provide defense as well. And now Camille Ham, hoping for the long throw here. Getting the long run up. And cleared out for another throw. A long delays during the course of these two throw-ins. Finally, Ham launches once again right into the sun. It caroms around, and a rare touch for Megan McClellan in goal for Rutgers. All Big Ten third team keeper a season ago. And now in space, in transition, trying to use that speed to good effect, but Lowry just taking off the ball. Kroger, however, picks it up. Searching for help. Tries to swing it over to Tiernan. In a 1v1 position, Riley Tiernan on the cutback. Gets it to the left foot. Shot is blocked. And then up and over by Daigle, ending the threat for Rutgers. Well, it's great work defensively, especially on the initial play from Lowry, picking up the ball, just driving at the back line in Indiana working their way back defensively, getting themselves set, and then it falls to Tiernan, who does well, and a good no call, her arms by her side the entire way, nowhere for her to put it. You can see Tiernan trying to argue that that was a handball, but good individual work from her again on this near side. You know, we talk about the, really the lack of production or, or opportunities in the attack for, for the Hoosiers, but doing such a good job of committing themselves defensively and doing the work that they need to on the other side of the ball. And a player down for Indiana on the near sideline. That is Megan Wampler, the senior from Carmel, Indiana. This has not been all that physical of a game overall. Just one yellow card so far. And a de facto water break for some of the other players. So Wampler, the transfer from Dayton, slow to get up here after Tiernan comes into her here and ooh, took it on the leg. And that is, a, that is a tough challenge coming in late. The high boot. Good to see Mompler up and walking. Right. 
She played for the Flyers of Dayton her freshman year, then transferred over to Indiana after that. Coming from Carmel, just outside of Indianapolis. So largely staying in the region to play college soccer. First for the Flyers, now for the Hoosiers. And that's going to be an infraction here against Indiana. Well, our week five Monday night football matchup is an AFC West rivalry game between the Raiders and Patrick Mahomes and the three and one Chiefs. It's at eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes says the offsides flag goes up here and also the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at six. Not many offensive chances, but wouldn't you know it, it comes right in the middle of the promo for Monday Night Football. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a good look from Rutgers. I mean, Tiernan is going to be upset about being called offside again. But I like the quick transitional moment from Rutgers trying to go as quickly as possible to catch this Indiana team out defensively. Haven't seen much of that throughout this game because Indiana's done good to get the numbers behind the ball. But it was Lowry trying to play that ball in behind. Now, one team that doesn't have problems generating offense, the Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> who we will see on Monday Night Football. Here is Camille Ham. Clever pass in the channel over to Bennett and smothered at the last moment by McClellan. The most dangerous offensive chance of the entire game for the Hoosiers. And it comes from the wide areas. There's so many numbers centrally for both of these teams. Not a ton of room. And that's a dangerous ball in. Just low, driven on the ground, forcing McClellan off her line. And the Indiana Hoosiers are right there trying to get on the end of it. Their best opportunity by far in this game. And good build up play to go central and then out wide to be able to play that ball across. And that was Blitchock, who was almost there ahead of McClellan. If she gets her right boot on it, that one's a goal. But instead, McClellan was able to scoop it up. And now we're going to get a stoppage here. It looks like Wampler is just too beat up from that challenge from Riley Tiernan earlier. So Megan Wampler is going to have to come out here. Try to continue, but that leg injury is just not going to let her do it. So the clock is stopped with precisely 31 minutes left to go. Indiana without a goal in each of their last five games and seven of their last eight. They've played 12 games on the season coming into this one. They've been held scoreless 10 times. As far as the goals conceded, quite a contrast from the early portion of the season to the last four and four games which they've all lost but trying to break that pattern here today. And I think the tough part for the Hoosiers is, you know, you get the idea of how they want to play and playing the three back, and then it gives them opportunity to get more players higher up the field when they do keep possession. This is a team that, that does want to keep the ball as often as possible, but having a difficult time playing penetrating passes. And when you're not threatening in the attack and have to play so much defense throughout the season could hold on for the early part of the season but it's just been difficult as of late not being able to generate much in the attack but then to hold off the opposition as well natasha kim is going to earn the game's first corner kick here believe it or not half an hour left to go in the second half and this is the first corner kick of the entire game Last week in beating Purdue, Rutgers scored two of their three goals off of corner kicks, but they haven't had a single one here today at home. In swinger, coming for Indiana. A lot of players in the box. Lofted high into the six and caught by McClellan. 
Former Big Ten Freshman of the Year, part of the youth national team. Already has the program record for minutes played for Rutgers. There's a ball over the top for Lowry. It was quiet in the latter portion of that first half. She drops it off and the foul is called. The foul is called and a penalty shot upcoming that could finally break this deadlock and put Rutgers on the board. And this is exactly why you go to inline. This time it's Lowry. Seen Tiernan do it a ton throughout the second half. But Lowry drives it back line. And this is a slotted ball back to the runners coming from a delayed position. And it forces the last second tackle from the Hoosiers and just catches the foot. There's the trailing with the tackle on the, the trailing foot, a clear penalty kick and a good attack from Rutgers to give them a chance to go up once here against the Hoosiers here at home. No debate on that one. A clear foul. And with just south of half an hour left to go, it is gonna be Kylie Daigle, the sophomore from Millville, New Jersey. Part of the Big Ten All-Freshman team a year ago, looking for her fifth goal of the season. It took a while, but it's now 1-0 Rutgers. And a good attack from Rutgers. Again, to go in line. Look to play the slotted ball back to the, the runners coming in late. Draws the, draws the penalty kick and then a, a great finish from Daigle. Here's the foul. There's the slotted ball back and just a, the late tackle in the end. And then Daigle just steps up with her left foot, just tucks it into the corner. Doesn't even make great contact, but enough on it just to, to slot it to that near post as she comes around and across her body past Gerstenberg to put Rutgers up 1-0. Sometimes it's just about placement, and that's all it took for Daigle to give Rutgers the first lead of the game, their 35th goal on the season. Here is Tiernan who's been the most dangerous player down the left, but also called for offsides now multiple times here in the second half. So now, after the game's first goal, how will that change the dynamic of what we have seen, of what Indiana might do, the tweaks and strategic adjustments they might make? Well, they're certainly gonna have to come out of their shape defensively, pick and choose those moments when they do so. Not con to concede another goal and leave themselves vulnerable, but at the same time have to be more threatening going forward. Here's the goal scorer, Daigle. Now for Brocious. And Rutgers can afford to be more methodical and measured here. Oh, but almost a bad giveaway from the back line. Indiana pursuing the ball more here. But a foul is called on Izzy Smith, the freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. Gatorade Alabama Player of the Year a season ago. Rutgers trying to extend their unbeaten streak to four consecutive games and deal Indiana their fifth straight loss here today. Kroger winning the ball, slotting it to the back line. And once again, enjoying the width of the field. 
Trying to go over the top for Gearman. Good run in behind. Drawing the throw. And Rutgers content to enjoy a spell of possession here. First of a three-game homestand for the Scarlet Knights. They will entertain Minnesota in another Big Ten contest here at Yersack Field on Thursday while Indiana continues with this short road trip. They're at Michigan State this coming Thursday. That's a heavy ball, but the breeze is going to hold it up for Tiernan. Well, once again, Tiernan is offside. She just cannot get that timing right with her runs on the left flank. Well, she continues to be a threat just by keeping herself wide, just a bit too eager. And knows she has to do better because that's about the fifth time in this second half already. I wonder, because she has so much space over there, the back line is not playing anywhere close to her if she's having trouble reading the line because sometimes if you play off the shoulder of a defender it allows you to read where the defense is playing and helps to time the runs better and she just doesn't have that ability well I, that might be part of it but i also just think it's just um you know understanding of when she can go forward and, and just being a bit more patient because she has the athletic ability to be able to beat players even if she does keep herself a couple yards on side instead of towing the line so tightly. Here is Ham floating it and caught by McClellan. Megan McClellan four shutouts away from tying the program record for shutouts. This would be her 42nd if she can continue to hold Indiana off the scoreboard today. That program record for Rutgers for shutouts by a keeper currently held by U.S. Women's National Team goalkeeper Casey Murphy who was with the U.S. women's national team, taking on England this past Friday at Wembley Stadium in London. As we're going to get a yellow card here, just our second of the game. It is going to go against Becky Fluchel of Rutgers. And Fluchel so important to the structure of this Rutgers team in the offense, keeping the ball moving, but defensively as well. And here she is just trying to stall the, any sort of attack from the Hoosiers. Won't be upset with picking up that car, just delaying, denying them any sort of opportunity going forward. Anna Bennett with the line drive headed easily out. And just a poor touch, losing it for a Rutgers throw in. And a few substitutions now for the Scarlet Knights as we approach the midpoint of this second half. Curla and Post coming in. Cassidy Banks, number 16, heading to the bench, the native of Staten Island. Part of the Big Ten all freshman team, her first year on campus. Indiana trying to find a way in. Izzy Smith on the turn. Soft lob into the box. And an elbow after the play on the Hoosiers. And was on Ava Akil, a redshirt freshman from Rochester, Michigan. Now the U.S. women's national team set to play in Spain in the second of two European friendlies. That's on Tuesday afternoon in Pamplona. I just talked about the first on Friday in London. They had that controversial 2-1 loss to England at Wembley Stadium. Our coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 a.m. Pacific on ESPN2 and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. It was 
Quite the spectacle, though, a sold-out Wembley Stadium to see the world champions against the European champions. And it turned out to be a tight one-goal game. Yeah, fun, fun match. And, you know, a close call on the, the offside call on the Trinity Rodman's goal. So, well, I'm not so sure about that one, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the call sometimes you yeah. don't get when yeah, you're exactly. playing in front of the English crowd, yeah. right? But nonetheless, but how really about, great crowd. Yeah, and, the showpiece for yeah. the women's game. That game sold out in record time as well. So you had the Cathedral of Football in London, Wembley Stadium hosting the U.S. versus England. It was packed in just a terrific atmosphere and great platform for the women's game. 22 minutes left to go here in this women's game at Rutgers on this Sunday afternoon. The Scarlet Knights with the penalty kick here in the second half by Kylie Daigle, the only scoring. And as a result, the 10th ranked Scarlet Knights have the one nothing lead over Indiana. This Rutgers program continues to get better and better, evolving through the years. In the first year, the program was 1984, and now here they are approaching 500 wins as a program here at Rutgers University. This would be their 12th win against just one loss so far this season if they can hang on today. Sarah Brocious. Now Tiernan on the run, this time on sides. Riley Tiernan with the service, but no one there for the Scarlet Knights. Tiernan again, enjoying a lot of time on the ball and wisely just changes fields. Poke free, a chance for the Hoosiers to counter. Izzy Smith playing it down the left wing. They only have one player in the box and can't even provide the service. And so now it's Rutgers coming back the other direction as this game is starting to open up somewhat here late, closing in on the final 20 minutes and all kinds of space now for the Scarlet Knights. Post pass is knocked right back to her. Tiernan once again open on the left wing. Gearman trying to work through defenders. She goes down. And it's going to be a call against Gia Gearman in the end. I still think there's opportunities, though, for, for Rutgers to continue to find Tiernan. Once you break through centrally, the defense for Indiana converges on the ball carrier, and it leaves Tiernan wide open. It's just too slow to be able to find her out wide. The amount of space that she's had on this near side, they have to continue to look for her, especially if she pulls herself and keeps herself in an onside position. It can be so dangerous delivering balls into the box. And she's shown the ability to beat her defender 1v1 for pace. So why not get her the ball and push others forward to receive the service inside the 18? Last time, she played it in, but there was nobody there. Indiana had a terrific chance with a cross earlier in this first half. Jen Blitchock a little late getting to it. It was their best scoring opportunity. Haven't had one since. Here's Smith from the top of the box. Her shot well wide. And that's better. We're seeing the Hoosiers starting to come out of their shape a little bit, still committed defensively, making it tough for Rutgers to get easy through balls on. But then they're committing more numbers, going at a bit more pace when they do get into their own attack. Several substitutions for each team. Allison Lowry, one of those players coming back on for Rutgers, a junior from Bridgewater, New Jersey. Early on, we saw just how dangerous she could be with her strength, with her speed. 
Got a rest late in that first half, and I haven't seen her all that much here in the second half as well. Here she is now. Finds support. Rutgers patient on the ball, perhaps a little too patient here. And a throw in for the Hoosiers. Well, Indiana has not beaten a ranked opponent in five years. If they're going to break that trend, they're going to need some offense here late as we come up on the final 17 minutes. Offensive chances have been at a premium for the Hoosiers. Who might be the source of a tying goal? It's headed on here. I just don't get that second bite at the apple. Elena Kalen cuts it in, picks out her target, but just a heavy touch from Olivia Smith, the freshman from Fishers, Indiana. Well, watch it roll out for a goal kick. Yeah, a bit of a heavy pass, but I like the aggression from the Hoosiers stepping up their line, committing more numbers forward, defending on the front foot, not just dropping and getting players behind the ball right away. Looking to see if they can find that tying goal, and they're committing to going forward. And you see the space opening up for them. And sometimes you want to ask the question on, on why don't they start the games like this a bit more. Yes, you want to keep it close and keep themselves in the game, especially with how some of the results have, have gone as of late for them. But playing on the front foot feels like that is what is the true nature of this Hoosiers team, especially if you're going to play in this 3-5-2, commit numbers forward, go after teams. Sometimes it's hard to break patterns of play, though, isn't it? You kind of get stuck in the way you're doing things, and to change on the fly can be somewhat challenging for certain squads. Well, certainly, and especially if just trying to stay together as a team, given the results as of late, as we mentioned, and conceding a lot, and how do you build into that? And that's keeping the game tight, and then looking to see if you can catch teams on the break. But if you're committing so many players forward, and Blitchock is your only player up top, She's not the one that's going to really get in behind, have explosive speed. She's going to bring others into the game. So if you're going to play this formation, then you have to be willing to be a bit more aggressive in your approach defensively to get numbers around the, the player that's holding up the ball up top. Trying to break here. Kalen tracked down from behind and just way too much on that pass breaking the lines through the channel and no shot at getting anybody to run onto it. That's all part of it though, in transition when you're running at speed to be able to deliver the properly weighted pass, make the right decision, all of that has to happen in such quick, short order. Sometimes even the most skilled teams struggle with that because you're in full flight, you have numbers running, and you can't always take the measure of your pass. So to hit it with the proper weight and the right trajectory and angle. Well, that's always the, the next evolution of a lot of the teams, the sophistication and in the final third on, on what part of the foot you're using, what ball to play, what space is the opposition giving you. Doing that at full speed is, is challenging, and especially against teams that are aggressive defensively or, or sit numbers behind the ball, presents different. Gerstenberg well out of her penalty area here. Yeah, right this one. it presents different opportunities, and Gerstenberg's been so good off her line, just being proactive, sitting in that space, and it's allowing the Hoosiers to be able to play a bit more of a high line as they try to chase for the equalizer late in this game. And they're going to get a free kick here. 
Just south of 13 minutes left to go here in Piscataway, New Jersey. A Kylie Daigle penalty shot from earlier in this second half. That is the difference right now as number 10 Rutgers looks for their 12th win against only one loss so far this season. Free kick from a long way out. Sliced in. Headed back post and on the line. The stop is made by Megan McClellan. Second dangerous chance of this second half for the Hoosiers and McClellan with her best stop of the day. Yeah, she's come up with two great plays, McClellan, and not a ton of opportunities to make saves, so it's difficult sometimes as a goalkeeper to come up big. There's a great initial free kick and exactly what you want to do when you get on the end of this, just head it back across goal and you see the on coming attackers for the Hoosiers just trying to get in front of the the ball to make a play on him. McClellan comes up big to make the save. And there were a couple of really nice things about that save. One, her body was behind the line, so she had to reach out in front of her to stop the ball from going over the line. And you kind of saw the in-between nature of the save. Do you go and try to stop it with your foot or do you go with the arm? Sometimes keepers get that wrong and they, they make the wrong decision. She guessed right there and made a terrific stop. Well, and also to keep a hold of it because we saw the, the Hoosiers coming in, framing the goal, looking to see if they can get on a loose ball after the initial header across. And for her to be following, making the save, keeping a hold of it, so important. Exactly what you want from a goalkeeper. It's been quiet for her all evening in terms of Indiana not really peppering the goal offensively and coming up with two two big saves in the second half. Here's the initial ball across and then the players coming in late. And there's the outstretch arms that you were talking about, Steve, to make sure that that ball doesn't see its way across the goal line. Well, it's interesting, Lori, because you might make the case that the two best scoring opportunities in the run of play yeah, have, have been from, Indiana. Yeah, they certainly have. And, you know, it still goes back to that question that we're asking. Why not? Why not try to, to take more risks in the attack? Yeah, Rutgers, for all of their possession and all of their four ways into the final third, they haven't generated a lot of threatening goal scoring opportunities. They do have the only goal off the penalty shot, but Indiana here in the second half probably has the two most legitimate scoring chances. And they've just been narrowly stopped by Megan McClellan in goal for the Scarlet Knights. 10 minutes now left to go. Oh, Meisel, dangerous back pass, didn't have a lot on it, and it was almost intercepted. <laughs> Camille Ham with the long throw, but she's going to have to do it again. Whistle uh, against the Hoosiers. <laughs> Riley Tiernan heads it on for Lowry. Tries to win it back. Double team though. And another yellow card coming up. This will be our third of the game. Going against Rutgers here. Well, that's a bit of a tough, a tough call. It looks like the two Indiana players is getting into the mix with Tiernan. So sure that was a yellow card on Tiernan. And now here is Tiernan. 
And with space. And she pushed it by the defender, and it ran out for a throw. So Tiernan going in the book. A sophomore who leads this team in assists and shots, and in fact is on pace to be top five all time in the program in assists. Rutgers, not a team that's going to sit back. And once again, nudging forward. Tiernan cutting in this time, gets it on her right foot. Now it comes out to Flukschel. And her shot is stopped by Gerstenberg. Well, it's Tiernan at the heart of the attack again. Just pulls herself wide on the near side, opens up space. But this time opts to go centrally to go herself. Doesn't see any options. Hits it from distance, and then it fortuitously bounces. Rutgers has the, a first-time shot, but Gerstenberg, who's been such a presence and goal for Indiana all game, it's easy in the end for her. Now here's Kalen with the pass. Now closing in on the final seven minutes, Rutgers with the 1-0 lead. Anything else tactically you can change up, any moves you can make if you're Indiana at this point to try and find the equalizer? Well, I think it's been a, a, a good last 20 minutes for Indiana after conceding, Wampler going out. It was right after that that Rutgers, you know, got the go-ahead goal and after conceding, have really come out of their shape, committing players forward, have been aggressive, higher up the field defensively. That's resulted in a few opportunities. I think you have to continue to go with that. And this last little bit, just leave your three center backs back there, force your wide players to get higher up, and, and look to see if you can play a bit more direct and, and win the first and second ball underneath. I think sometimes with the way that these games go on Sunday afternoons, difficult to to play in these games. Have to grind out the win and keep forcing Rutgers to, to try to defend. Lowry drops it back. Rutgers trying to salt it away with a second goal here. Shot blocked at the top of the box. Flushel for Lynch. Trying to spin. And just hold possession, work on that clock. Down to inside of half a dozen minutes now left to go. Substitutions for both teams. Gearman, the player coming back in for Rutgers here. Izzy Smith also coming on for Indiana. Well, the NHL season starts this Tuesday night on ESPN and ESPN Plus with our opening night doubleheader. The Lightning take on the Rangers at Madison Square Garden at 7.30 Eastern in a rematch of last season's Eastern Conference Final to get things started. Then, the Golden Knights are in LA taking on the Kings. And you can always watch both on the ESPN app from anywhere. Yes, hockey season is upon us. Weather getting cooler here in the Northeast, so time for the puck to drop, believe it or not. The NHL season beginning, college football, the NFL, NCAA soccer all in full swing. Terrific time of year. And here in the Northeast, a terrific Sunday if you're a fan of Rutgers soccer, leading 1-0 here late over Indiana. And the New York Jets, who are playing up the road at the Meadowlands, leading the Miami Dolphins today in a divisional battle. Here is Jen Blitchock. Gets to the end line for Indiana. Cross comes in right into the arms of Megan McClellan. And this time it's Blitchock. Typically, we see her central trying to get on the end of some of those balls. This time, her she's the one that's going wide, serves a dangerous ball in right to McClellan and for her to be able to pick it off. But I like these attacks and these attacks by Indiana that are going with numbers, decisive in what they're trying to do. Just have to see more of that throughout the 90 minutes. Here is Lowry. Tactically savvy and smart, playing it backwards. Again, chewing on that clock. No hurry in going forward. Indiana has to make the moves here if they are to avoid what would be their sixth consecutive shutout here. Yeah. 
Three and a half left to go in Piscataway. Yeah, and if you're Rutgers right now, you're slowing things down. You're at home, up 1-0. Don't want to give any opportunities away. Allow for Indiana to pick off any balls and turn it into some sort of a dangerous opportunity. So just slow things down, get the ball high and wide, get numbers behind the ball. Now the best defense is a good offense philosophy being employed here by Rutgers. Hanging on a possession, working the ball, and watching the clock tick down, trying to preserve this one nothing lead. Only goal coming on a penalty kick for the Scarlet Knights here in this second half. The two best scoring opportunities, ironically enough, coming from Indiana here in the second half. The Scarlet Knights haven't had many genuine chances from the run of play, but they earn the penalty. Kylie Daigle converted, and right now that's the difference. We had just north of two minutes left to go. Well, Rutgers does not have a corner kick on the afternoon, but they do have a free kick here that's just slightly shorter. And Lowry will just take it to the corner to stall, work on the clock, and now emerges. Finally breaks three, works it back. And now they'll get their first corner kick with 1.40 left to go. Yeah, and they have the opportunity just to slow things down. No need for Kroger to speed things up. Just take her time. Most likely it'll go short. Just to waste a bit more time with the clock dwindle down, as we're seeing right now. Just need to be, make sure, you sometimes see players get injured in these moments. Now well, they've reduced the size of the field, that's for sure. <laughs> Cadet to play in the corner. As we now have one minute left to go. Well, now, perhaps one final rush for the Hoosiers here. Some tired legs out there, but Gerstenberg is going to launch this one as they try to give themselves an opportunity here. Work it into the wind. They'll have a throw in here with half a minute left to go. Camille Ham, long throw in. Headed on by Blitchock. Flicked by Smith. Now Izzy Smith. Works between two defenders. She chips it in. No one there for Indiana. And Rutgers is gonna hang on. The 10th ranked Scarlet Knights use a second half penalty kick from Kylie Daigle to get the one 